My name is Mark Nunnikoven. I'm a distinguished cloud strategist at Lacework, and in this HelpNet security video, I'll be talking about the pros and cons of agent versus agentless approaches in security. Now, when you're trying to figure out how to get started with or even improve cloud security at your organization, it won't be long before you stumble into some sort of agent versus agentless argument for cybersecurity controls. Why is this a debate? Even more curious, why is this a debate that approaches a Vim versus Emacs or tabs versus spaces level of fervor? Now, if we take a step back and try to view things objectively, we see that there isn't really a debate here at all. The best approach is to leverage the power of both agent and agentless deployments. They're two pieces of the same puzzle. Now, before I explain why you need both, let's make sure that we're on the same page about what an agent is. Well, an agent is a program that's running on your systems. That's it. Agents uh, deploy directly into your virtual machines, containers, or functions, and this gives them a level of visibility that just isn't possible from any other location. Agents can tell you a lot about what's going on in your systems. Do you want to know which processes are running in a container? Well, there needs to be a program running to provide that information, and that program is the agent. Are you wondering which files are open within your operating system? You'll need an agent to get that information out. Want to take things up a notch and stop a process from executing or figure out who deleted a file? You guessed it, you're going to need an agent. Now, sometimes those agents are there by default. They're deployed as part of the uh, standard image for the infrastructure provider. Now, other times they're part of another solution and you're going to need to deploy them. But if agents are so great, what are the arguments against them? Well, first of all, that deployment step, I'm going to be honest, that can be tough. But there are ways to make deployment simpler. Automation plays a huge role here. So does having a strong build pipeline system. That Those, just a couple of examples that are going to help move things forward and smooth things out. Another drawback about agents, they can impact performance. The more an agent does, the more resources it can consume. But that's a constant with any type of computation. It takes resources to get things done. A key here is to find the balance that works for your solution. Now, because agents only work on the machines they're deployed on, they can't provide visibility beyond that host. That's where the agentless approach comes into play. Now, we know that an agent is a program that's running on your systems. So it makes sense that an agentless approach means that no additional code is running on your virtual machines, containers, or within your functions. With an agentless approach, your security controls connect directly to your cloud service provider to gather data about how you're using your cloud environment. The cloud service providers, they log each action that you take in the cloud services that you're using. This information is essential to understand how you're using your environment. And this data, it's only available outside of your machines, your containers, and your functions. That means that agent is not going to gather it for you. It can only be gathered with an agentless approach. So we've seen that there's some data that is unique to the agent, and there are uh, some data that is unique to the agentless approach. Well, there is a small area of overlap, some data that can be pulled either by the agent or agentlessly. For example, how much CPU is being used or how much storage space you have available on a virtual machine. So if the agentless approach provides access to unique data and the agents provide access to unique data or create unique data, why is there a debate about which one to use? Isn't it obvious that you need both? Well, with mo as with most issues, this one, it's not a technical problem. This is a people problem. Often the relationship between an organization's security team and the builders is, let's say, less than ideal. Security teams, they're there to make sure that the business achieves its overall goals while effectively managing the risks that come along with working in a digital world. Teams that are building, well, they're normally heads down. They don't have enough time, they don't have enough people or resources to focus on the demands coming from the centralized security practice. Builders, they're focused on delivering direct business value. So this leaves the security team, despite both teams actually working towards a shared goal, the security team, they're fighting fires and they're always working from behind. They're struggling to keep up and to get their work prioritized with everything else that's going on. Coordinating and communicating with other teams, it's extremely difficult and it's time consuming. 
time that no one really has. So let's, let's switch this up. Let's look at this from the builder's perspective. Well, they're trying to build reliable, secure solutions for the business. No conflict there. But these solutions, they need to be performant, reasonable in scope, simple to run, and of course, they can't be cost prohibitive. Oh, and they're probably going to need to deploy that solution quickly and frequently. These demands, this means that the relationship between the security teams and the builders, it's overwhelmed. In most cases, strained is going to be a really polite way to describe it. But what does this have to do with what we're talking about, that agent versus agentless approach question? Well, when a team that you don't have a strong connection with, the security team, comes along and they ask you to install code, in this case, they're asking you to install their agent, to serve what seems to be their needs, that's really hard to jump on board with. You can't really support that because it feels like you're doing them a favor and you're not sure why. The best possible outcome, the best possible outcome is for builders to say, nah, fine, and just do what the security teams ask. But a begrudging acceptance is not really what you should be aiming for as an organization, especially if innovating uh, quickly and safely is your number one priority, and it should be. So it may seem it's easier or simpler to say that agents are bad or agent lists is the modern way to go instead of going out of your way to overcome those communication gaps and install something on your systems. This debate often puts the security teams and the builders at odds, which is really a shame because in reality, both teams are aiming for the same thing. They're trying to build resilient solutions that meet the business goals. And to achieve those goals, you need visibility into your cloud environments, as much visibility as possible. A level of visibility that really only comes from data that's available uniquely to the agents and through an agentless approach. You need both of these approaches. So getting agents deployed in your environment, it takes work. The teams involved, they need to understand the value of that work. Why are they putting in the time? They need to understand that deploying those agents, it's going to increase visibility, which reduces the overall risk and lets everybody move faster. That's a win for everyone in the business. The agent versus agentless debate, it obscures the real issue. Teams, they need to work together to ensure that they're building strong, resilient solutions. The more data you have, the better insights that you can draw. And the better insights that you have, the more confident that you can be that the things that you're built are working as expected. Whatever you built, you want it to do only what you built it to do and nothing more. That's what security is all about.